Hi everyone, Becca here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sewing up the Baby East romper from Lolan Kids. And this is a relatively simple pattern, but there are a couple aspects to it um, that can get a little confusing, such as the fold over mittens or um, when you're doing the snap tabs. So I am actually going to be doing the pant version with fold over mittens on the long sleeve. And I am also going to be showing you a way to do the a band instead of a binding around um, the neckline and the front of the body. And I will be doing um, a hoodless version, but the hooded version isn't much different. You just attach the hood and then basically follow all of the steps. So let's go ahead and get started. Right, to get started I'm just going to go over the pieces that we need so as I stated I am not doing the hood and I am doing the fold over mittens so I have my um, bottom cuffs because I'm doing just the regular cuffs for the ankles um, so I have those and then for my wrist cuffs I have the two shorter pieces and the two longer pieces for the fold over cuffs my two sleeves my binding piece that as I said, I'm gonna just use as a band. And then I have my back here and then my two front opposites, um, which means you should have them that the flaps are going in different directions. And I am using a coordinating fabric as you can see for my other flap. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start by attaching the sleeves. So we are going to work with our front pieces first. And I'm just going to lay both of these out here. And again, your curve should be, I'm going to overlap them a little bit just so it's easier to see, but your curves should be opposite with the pattern facing you. Otherwise, um, they weren't cut correctly and you'll need to recut them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our sleeves. And since these are our front pieces, our sleeves have this curve up at the top. This is part of your neckline and the lower point is your front and the higher point is the back of your neckline. So we're going to take our sleeves with right sides together. I'm going to take one sleeve. I'm going to take that side with the lower point over here and match it up with the arm side on this piece. Just match up those raw edges and then I'm going to do the same thing with this piece over here. Here's my low side. Line it up and pin that into place. And then we're just gonna take this over and sew along both of those seams. All right, so we have those sleeves sewn on both of those pieces. Now what we're gonna do is we're just going to open it up here and we are going to get our back piece, our back bodice, and match up the seams on our back piece and you can do these one at a time if you would like or you can kind of just swing this around and do both sides at once which is what I like to do and pin those into place so now we have the sleeves sewn to our front pieces and then pinned to our back piece and then I'm going to just go and sew those up real quick all right, so once you have your back sewn on, it's gonna look like this, and now you can see um, the sleeves kind of starting to take place. So the next thing we're gonna do is um, go over the placement for the um, twill tape or for your the inside snap. Um, and what I wanna talk about here is one, um, the instructions recommend using twill tape, perfectly fine. Um, I am actually gonna be using this is just double fold bias tape. Um, I'm gonna use it just as they use the tool tape. You just want something, you can use a ribbon, some sort of woven, strong, sturdy fabric that a snap isn't gonna wrap through. I don't have twill tape and this matches, so I'm just gonna be using these and I'm just gonna leave them folded, which is perfectly fine. And so in the instructions, it says about how one is going to be in between the fabrics and the other one is going to be on top and so what that just matters for is 
where your snaps are going to go. So for mine, I want my stripe fabric to be the top fabric. So once you have it laid out, which way you want your um, flaps to go, which one you want on the top, you just really make sure you double check the way you're putting these in. Um, so I want this side to be on the outside. So this flap needs to be on the outside of my garment. So when it's done, it's going to be sewn to the seam like this so that it flaps over and this flap will snap to it. So I am going to come over to my back piece where I made my dot. The raw edges are going to be lined up with my raw edges and I'm just going to put them on top of that dot and pin it there. And then so this side, the tab is going to be on the inside here for this one to snap down to. So that means I need this one to be on the wrong side of my back. So I'm just going to put this again, wrong sides together, or raw edges together, I'm sorry, over the top. And then I'm just going to flip this back over. And so you can see here, this flap is on top of my back and this one, or this one is on the inside and this one is on the outside. And then I'm just going to flip this and get those lined up and you can baste your tabs on if you want to make sure they stay in place or you can just make sure you pin it on there good and make sure you catch it as you're sewing and then we're just going to line up our raw edges all the way from our ankle all the way around the armpit and to the wrist. Pin those in place. And so here I'm just going to be extra careful, keeping that there, pinning that down to the armpit and then line up my wrist. So then we're just going to, once you get everything pinned down and lined up, I'm just gonna go and sew all the way down and around, and then you'll do the same thing for this side. So once you've sewn your side seams up, um, they will look like this. You have the little armholes. And again, I highly recommend, so here's my flap there, and this one is on the inside. I highly recommend flipping it open again and making sure that your flaps line up to how you want your um, front pieces to go because right now is the time to fix it um, and so what we're going to do next is we are going to take our binding piece and we are going to attach it and so I had mentioned that I am doing a band instead of a binding if you are comfortable with binding go right ahead and do your binding what you would do for the binding is you would take this piece open right sides together sew it down with your raw edges all the way around and then once that's sewn on you would fold it over and then wrap it around here and then top stitch it down but since we are doing the band i am going to take my binding piece here and fold it in half long ways to find my halfway point and this is going to be what matches up to my neckline and then I'm just going to fold it in half to match those raw edges with wrong sides together so our right sides are out on both sides and I am just going to match this up on the right side of my fabric to the top middle neckline and pin that in place and then I'm going to just kind of lay it out so it's nice and flat fold this piece over here matching these raw edges and then I'm going to take it and line up the short edge here with this bottom curve here 
and pin that in place. And then you're just going to kind of slowly continue folding this and pinning it along this front bodice here. I'm going to go all the way around. You might have to stretch it a little bit to get it to fit. So sometimes I like to just kind of go into sections and then work in between. So do a couple bigger sections. So then you'll just do this all the way around and then you'll go all the way around this other side to this end and then you will just go and sew all the way around from each crotch point to each crotch point. All right, so I got that band sewn on. You can see now if I open it up how it looks. And what I like to do now is I like to fold the seam allowance away from the band and towards the body and I just go over and top stitch this down all the way around to make it lay nicely and stay so that it's not flipping back over. So I am going to go and top stitch that and be back. So once it's top stitch you can see how nice that looks and this lays the right way and it also helps the seam stay down in the back so it's not as irritating. Um, it's not required to top stitch it but I definitely recommend it but um, the one thing I will say is know your machine. If your machine doesn't handle top stitching well then don't do it um, or if you have a walking foot and you know that it's going to be okay um, or a cover stitch go ahead and do it. But so what we're going to do next is we are going to flip our fronts over again making sure you have it the correct way you want it to lay. So since I want my stripes to be the front and the foliage to be the back, um, the foliage is going to be the fabric on the top. So what we're going to do is you're just going to line up the ankle seams here, going to line up your bands or binding and your middle back there, and then your ankle seams on this side. And you can use more pins if you want, but for me this is good. And then you're just going to sew up and around. You're going to sew over the this section where your binding or bands are all the way down to your other ankle. Now we have this all sewn up here and we are almost done. So what we're going to do next is we are going to just do the ankle cuffs and this step will be the same if you're doing the wrist cuffs as well, just the basic ones, not the fold over cuffs. Um, but I'll obviously be doing the fold over cuffs here in a second. So what we're going to do just for the basic cuffs is you're going to find the green line of your fabric, make sure it goes up and down. Your green line is the um, little stripes on your fabric. I don't know if you can see it, but um, there are little subtle stripes on your fabric. That's your green line. It's also the way if you pull against it, the way that the, it stretches the most. And you can kind of see those lines um, when it's stretched out a little bit more. But we're just going to fold our cuffs with right sides together along our grain line, matching up this long edge here. We'll do that on both pieces. And then we're just gonna take these over to our machine and just sew down this long side of each cuff. So I'm just gonna show you for one cuff now. And you can see I have this side seam sewn. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and fold it in half, wrong sides together. I like to match up my side seam and just put a pin in there while I'm doing that and then flip it so that 
you have your cuff and the entire way it is wrong sides together and your right side of your fabric is facing the outside and it's on the inside here and what I'm also going to do now is take it and fold it in half from my pin here and put another marker in there and now we are going to take our leg now I'm doing a solid so this doesn't affect me but if you are doing a print that is directional so meaning that it all goes in one direction um, like for instance this one is not super obvious but the leaves all face the same way for the most part. You just wanna make sure when you're putting your cuff in that then when it's done and folds out that it is going to be facing the same direction as the rest of your fabric. You don't wanna go through all of this and then have your cuff be upside down. But what we're gonna do is we're going to slide our cuff in. I like to take the seam of my cuff to the inseam, the inside seam of my pants and line it up. So I have right sides together I'm going to line up my raw edges and line up this seam here and then I'm going to line up my raw edges and this clip with this seam here. Then we're just going to go over to our machine and our, you can see the cuff is a little bit smaller than the ankle which is perfectly fine it's supposed to be. I'm going to stretch your cuff slightly and sew all the way around making sure your raw edges stay lined up and then we will repeat those exact same steps for the other ankle and then again if you were doing the just basic cuffs on the wrist you would do those same steps up there as well with your wrist cuff pieces. Alright so I went ahead and sewed on both my cuffs and you can see here they just fold out and pop out. Again you want to make sure that your prints match up if you are doing a printed piece. So now I'm going to show you the fold over mitten. So I'm going to set this aside for a second. And I'm going to get out my pieces for my mitten. So you should have two pieces for each mitten. One longer piece and one shorter piece. So we're going to lay the shorter piece. We want our right side up facing us. And then the longer piece, we want the wrong side facing us. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our long piece, wrong sides together. So now you're going to have your right side facing you and you're going to line up all your raw edges and then you're going to take your folded end of your long piece and fold it down again until there's about it's about three eighths of an inch or one centimeter from your raw edge so you can see here how this is almost to the edge and I have about a centimeter there I'm going to go ahead and just put a clip right here on both sides of my long piece and then I'm just going to take it and set that on top lining up the raw edge down here on my shorter piece and then you are going to just take your shorter piece and fold it over so again this is the right side so the right side onto the right side and that should fit about perfectly on there and then I do like to put some clips up here just to hold this in place and you want to make sure that the um, short piece is hugging the folds of the longer piece if there's a gap up here um, you're going to have a gap at the bottom of your mittens and you don't want that so you just want to make sure everything is lined up and held in there snug and then you're just going to sew down these sides so once your cuff is sewn up it's going to look like this you can look in there and you can see kind of your fold over broom it and then you're just going to fold it out and like magic you have a cuff and then here's your fold over mitten so you can see here um i have a little bit of a lip and that's what i was talking about when i said you really want to make sure it's hugging that is not bad at all but um if your shorter piece isn't hugging your longer folded piece tight enough you could end up with a pretty big lip right there on the bottom which doesn't hurt anything it's just not as pretty so now that we have our cuff done you can see we have this part where we folded it not quite down so this is where we are going to want our seam allowance now this is a newborn size so these are pretty little and kind of hard to work with um, the bigger sizes 
are a little bit different or a little bit easier. But so this is um, what's gonna get sewn and we don't want to catch this fold when we sew it on, otherwise our mitten is not going to fold over. And so what I like to do is I like to take my body and I like to, when my body is face up, I put the folded side down so it's towards the back so that then when you fold it, it folds from the back over the front. It's kind of just personal preference. It doesn't really matter either way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cuff in to my sleeve. Now this is basically just like the same we did with the ankle cuffs now. Um, and then I'm just going to line up my side seam here and my raw edges and then find the halfway point on my wrist and line up the side seam of my cuff. And for the larger sizes, you might wanna do four pins in that cuff and quarter it. But with a newborn, there's not really room for that anyways. So then you're just gonna go and you're gonna sew all the way around, stretching your cuff slightly, keeping those raw edges lined up. And again, making sure you don't catch your mitten, if you left enough of a fold, there shouldn't really be any concern. Then you're just going to do that and then repeat the same exact steps on the other cuff pieces and attach it to the other wrist. All right, so once you have your cuffs sewn on, you're basically done. Um, you can turn it right side out. You can see there's my mittens and they fold over the hands. Um, Turn it right side out and the last thing you have to do is add the snaps and so just kind of like the tabs for our snaps there's markings on your pattern piece and um, you may have transferred those over already if not you can go ahead and do it it's just um, like right on the curve you just make a little dot um, but I am going to get mine lined up and then what you're going to do is you're going to add a one part of your snap to your tab, the other part to your, I'm gonna put it on the um, band part. You would put it on the binding. So the band does make it a little bit wider because um, the binding would line up about here. So it makes it about a quarter of an inch or so wider, but nothing that is going to affect the wear of the pattern. And so then the same thing, you would put a snap one side on this tab here. And for this one, you want to make sure when you're doing the tabs um, that they're facing the right direction for the um, snap to come across and hook to it. And I also like to, um, since this is just a cotton spandex and um, it's pretty stretchy and semi-thin, when I attach my snap on the back side here, I will put a piece of my bias tape or a little piece of the cotton woven or you could do the twill tape um, on the back side of my binding just to keep my snap from ripping through and I would do the same thing over here. And then um, the instructions say if you're doing a newborn or zero to three month, you don't need to do a snap up here. So I am not going to. Um, I obviously don't have my baby yet to try this on. So I'm not gonna be able to tell you whether you do need that for a newborn or not, um, but I'm not gonna do it, but there's markings on there and you would just put those snaps on and I would do the same thing if I was doing it to reinforce the backside of those pieces. All right, so once you get those snaps added, you are done. And as I mentioned, I'm not doing the top one for now. Um, depending on how it fits baby, I might add one up here. But you can see, I'll show you, um, here is that snap on the front, opens up, and here's my tab, and you can see the woven behind it. I might trim that a little bit, and then on the inside, again, there's that, and I used a different color for that, but, and on the tab, so then it just wraps around and goes on real easily on to baby. And again, then the fold over mittens, super cute just here they just fold over to cover their little hand so i hope that this video was helpful on the e-stromper i hope that it helped answer any questions that you might have had 
on it. And if you had any other questions, feel free to leave a comment or you can always reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Sobex. I will put a link in the description to my Instagram so you can check that out. I share lots of tips and projects that I'm working on. Also make sure that you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. But I hope you are super happy with your baby Easter romper and thanks for watching. Bye!